Today's video is lesson 35, solving linear systems with substitution. And if you if you can recall what we did in lesson 34, where we solved linear systems with graphs, we're doing the same exact thing, which is solving the systems for um, the coordinate point that the two lines intersect on, except this time with substitution, it's more of an algebraic way of solving, not a um, graphical way. So before we begin, let's just go over two uh, old examples so that we can kind of understand the skills that we're going to need to solve systems with substitution. And the first um, old example was uh, evaluating expressions. And if you can remember what we did with evaluating expressions, we were given some expression like 6x plus y. And it asked us to evaluate when x equaled 8 and y equaled negative 1. And what we did was we took what x equaled, which was 8, and we substituted it in for where x was in the expression. And the same thing with y. We took what y equaled, which is negative 1, and we substituted it in or just replaced it with where y was in the expression. So here we have 6, and then we have got 8. And then we replace y with negative 1. And then we just simplified using order of operations. So 6 times 8 is 48. Plus a negative is just minus 1. 48 minus 1 is 47. And we were done. So the big thing here that we're going to need to do is understand just how to substitute something that a variable equals. So substituting the number in for where the variable was. So substitution is the important takeaway here. And with solving equations, which is the second old example, with variables on both sides. And we're just very familiar with solving equations with one variable in it, in this case, x. So just review what we do when we have one variable on both sides. We've got um, 6 times x plus 6. So we've got one equation with one variable. And what we do is we first simplify. So there's nothing to simplify on the left side. But on the right side, we can distribute. So we're going to distribute the 6 to x and 6. And we have our new equation as 6x plus 36. And now, since there's nothing that we can simplify on either side, what we're going to do is we're going to start using inverse operations to solve for x. And the first thing we have to do, since there's an x on both sides, is eliminate the variable term on one side. So I'm going to eliminate it on this side by adding 8x to both sides. These will go to 0, and we're left with just 8. And then 6x plus 8x is 14x plus 36. Now we can eliminate the constant term by just subtracting 36 to both sides. And 8 minus 36 is negative 28 equals 14x. We can eliminate the coefficient by dividing 14 to both sides. And we get negative 2 equals x. So again, the big takeaway here is just being able to solve one equation with one variable in it for that variable. So how do these or how do those two skills fit into what we're doing today? Well, we'll figure that out as we go through this example. So what we're doing is we're going to solve using substitution. And then we're going to write the solution as a coordinate point. And if you can look over here, if we were to graph both of these lines on the coordinate plane, the point that they intersect would be negative 3, 1. So we already know what the solution is to this systems of equations because we can see on the graph where they intersect. But as we go through, you'll see this is another way of finding the, the solution without having to graph. So the first thing that we do when we're solving using substitution is identify the equation with the isolated variable. So the first step is to identify the equation with the isolated variable. In this case, it's this bottom equation because y is by itself. In this top equation, neither of the variables are isolated. So um, the bottom equation is the one that has the isolated variable. So we're done with step one. So step two is substitute its expression into the equation to create one into the other equation to create one equation with one variable. So what that means is we know that y equals x plus 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to take x plus 4 and we're going to substitute that in 4 or replace that where y is in the other equation. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we have now 5x 
minus 6. Now instead of y, we're going to write x plus 4. We'll put that in parentheses. Equals negative 21. Good. So we, we've done step 1. We've done step 2. Now step 3 is to solve the equation. So now we have one equation with one variable in it. And we just have to solve for that one variable. So let's go ahead and start solving. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is simplify by distributing. So we have 5x. Negative 6 times x is negative 6x. Negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. Sorry, is negative 24 equals negative 21. And now we can still simplify further by just combining like terms. So we have 5x minus 6x is negative 1x minus 24 equals negative 21. And now we can start using inverse operations. So we're going to eliminate the constant term first by adding 24 to both sides. And we have negative 1x equals negative 21 plus 24 is 3. And we're going to divide by negative 1 to get x by itself. And we have x equals negative 3. So as you can see, we've got the correct x value that um, we saw on the graph over here. And now we can move into step 4, which is substituting again, just like we did when we evaluated expressions, this value for x into, and it says, the first or the step one equation. So the step one equation was this equation. So we're going to go ahead and substitute negative 3 in for x right here. So we have y equals negative 3 plus 4. And we can go ahead and figure out what y is now just by simplifying. So negative 3 plus 4 is negative 1. And that equals y. And our final step to close it out, we just write it as a coordinate point. So, oh, I made this mistake. Um, this is not negative 1, I'm sorry. This is actually a positive 1 because if I owe $3 and I have 4, if I owe 3 and I have 4, then I've got enough money to cover off my debt and I have 1 left over. So it's 1, sorry. So if we write this as a coordinate point, we have negative 3, 1. And that is how we solve using substitution. This will be the last example for today. And the steps remain the same. So use the steps that we had in example one. So the first step is to identify the equation with the isolated variable. And in this case, they're both isolated. So it doesn't matter which one we use. So I'm just going to use this one right here. And the step two was to substitute what this variable equals, in this case, negative 5x plus 2, for the same variable in the other equation. So step two is to create the equation using substitution. So we have negative 5x plus 2 equals negative 4x plus 1. And we just took this expression and we replaced it for y in the other equation. Now step 3 is to solve. So we're going to go ahead and solve. Um, we can't simplify anything on the left side. We cannot simplify any like terms on the right side. So we need to um, eliminate the variable term on one side. I'm going to eliminate it on this side by adding 5x. These are now gone, so we're just left with 2 equals negative 5x plus 5, or sorry, negative 4x plus 5x is just 1x plus 1. And now we can eliminate the constant term by subtracting 1 to both sides. 2 minus 1 is 1, and 1x is just x, so x equals 1. And now we need to move into the fourth step, which was now substitute again the value for x into that original equation that we identified. So y equals negative 5 times 1 plus 2. And we can go ahead and, and figure out what y is by just simplifying. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5 plus 2. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3 equals y. So we know that as a coordinate point, it is 1 comma negative 3 and then again if you look up at the graph that is the same point that they would intersect at if we were to graph them to solve. Use your guided notes as you go through the homework. Good luck.